My name is Jeremy Elkins with Untreated Art. This video will cover the step-by-step -step instructions for using our DIY charcuterie board pour kit. If you haven't had a chance yet to take a look at our DIY kits, they're available on our website www.untreatedart.com. I'll place a link in this video for those who haven't purchased the kit yet but would like to do so. What's included in the kit is shown here in this picture. There is a reusable silicone mold that we'll use to place the wood into for the epoxy pour, mold release wax, the live edge wood, resin, colored mica powder, safety glasses, breathing mask, mineral oil, blocks, and gloves. In this video, we will go step by step on how to use these supplies to prepare and complete your epoxy pour. After the epoxy pour is completed, we will continue the video to show you step by step how to finish your charcuterie board. Methods on how to complete the finish work vary person to person. I will show you our process, but the tools that you have might be different. Additional supplies and tools that you will need to complete this project that weren't included in the pour kit are going to be two mixing buckets for the epoxy resin, clamps, some sort of beam or support brace that can go across the form on the blocks, circular saw, and random orbit palm sander. Okay, let's get started. We're going to start with seasoning our mold with mold release wax. We recommend that you apply two heavy coats for the seasoning process. Apply a heavy amount, as seen in the video, in between each coat. We are using a paper towel to apply the wax. Continue to apply the wax, getting into the edges and corners and on the side walls. Although silicone rubber is resistant to having resin stick to it, make sure to apply this wax anywhere that is possible for resin to touch, from the bottom to the top of the walls, in the corners and the edges. This will ensure that when you remove your charcuterie board from the form that the silicone rubber will not tear as it will not be stuck to the resin. After the seasoning process is complete with two coats, make sure to apply a third coat before your actual epoxy pour. The next time that you use the form, you will only need to apply one coat of the mold release wax, and each time after that. Apply enough wax to the form that there is a heavy coat. Once you've applied a heavy coat of wax onto the form, continue to work it in, removing the excess as you go. Make sure that there are not large amounts left in the form. Anything left behind could possibly end up in your epoxy resin. You want a nice flat surface, wall to wall, including the bottom. For reducing air bubbles in your resin and epoxy bleed on the ends of your boards, we recommend sealing all edges and the bottom with resin before the actual epoxy pour. Once the resin has cured, you will want to take 120 sandpaper and sand the live edge only so that the new epoxy can adhere to the cured epoxy. Now you're ready to place your wood slabs into the epoxy form. In this example we have a river set, so we're going to place the live edges facing each other and the square cut edges on the outside. Place the 1x2 plastic blocks on the ends of each board, four in total. These will hold down the boards from floating once the epoxy resin has been poured into the mold. Using your braces, place them across the blocks in a straight line. Fasten the braces down to your work table using a wood clamp. In your kit you will find that the provided resin has a A part and a B part. The A is the resin. It's also a 2 to 1 mix ratio. We're going to use two parts A and one part B for our mixture. You can calculate how much resin you're going to need for the project based on the width, length, and height of the area that you're going to pour your resin into. By converting your cubic inch amount into a liquid, in this case ounce form, it will determine on how much you will need. For this project, we calculated 48 ounces total in resin. 
Using the Part A resin, we have filled the mixing container to 32 ounces. Next, we will add the Part B, the hardener, to the mixture. Given that it's a 2 to 1 mixture, 2 parts A resin, 1 part B hardener, we're going to add an additional 16 ounces for a total of 48 ounces to the 32 ounces of resin. Next, we'll add in our mica powder. In this case, we have the color of purple. Depending on how strong you want your color to be in the resin, you can add as little or as much of this mica powder to the mixture. Using the provided paint stick, go ahead and start mixing together your Part A and Part B resin along with the mica powder. It is very important that you read and follow the instructions provided on the epoxy resin containers. Be sure to be wearing the proper safety gear while mixing your epoxy. While mixing the epoxy, it is important to scrape the bottom of your container continuously along with the outside edge of the container. This will ensure that the Part A and Part B are completely mixed. Once thoroughly mixed, then pour the resin into a new container. This will reduce the chance that there are unmixed portions of the A and B that are clung to the side of your container. Continue to mix your resin once again. You may notice that air bubbles are forming in the mixture. There is no real need to be concerned about these bubbles, but if you'd like to, you can use a propane blowtorch to knock them down on the top, otherwise they will come out on their own after the pour. Now we're ready for the main epoxy pour. Go ahead and slowly pour the epoxy into the form. Try not to spill the epoxy on top of the wood. This will reduce epoxy bleed down the road during the finish. You can see that the air bubbles are popping on their own, and after about 12 hours, you won't even see any at all. Make sure to follow the guidelines on the instructions of the epoxy resin for cure times before you pop the mold out for work. Here you can see that the air bubbles are all gone. Once the cure process is complete, you can remove the board securing the form down to your work table. If you do this too early, the wood can float in the epoxy and you may end up with an uneven board. To remove the board after the cure process, slightly pull back on the silicone mold, separating the resin from the silicone. Silicone rubber is a tougher product than silicone alone, but still can be ripped if enough pressure is applied. You will find that it does take slight force to separate the mold from the resin but the mold release wax will do its job and you can slowly start to peel back the form. Once all the edges have been slightly separated, you can grab hold of the board and peel back the form completely from top to bottom. So long as you use the mold release wax in between each pour, this process can be repeated many times. As stated earlier, you only need to apply one coat from here on out after the original two coats of seasoning. You'll find on some areas of the resin that the mold release wax stuck to it when you removed it from the form. This can easily be removed using a scraper or a putty knife. This board wasn't pre-sealed on the bottom or on the edges so that we can show you what epoxy bleed looks like. Here on the ends you'll notice that the resin has penetrated into the wood grain. This is what we call epoxy bleed, but really it's just a stain. Epoxy bleed can be trimmed off during the finish process, but it may shorten the length of your overall project. For maximizing the length, you'll want to pre-seal those ends, which will seal it off from the main epoxy pour, reducing the amount of bleed. The same goes for the sides of your boards. Notice that the resin has worked its way around into the crack between the wood and the form on the sides. During the cure process, some resin ends up on the bottom of your boards, on the sides, and on the ends. This lowers the level of resin in your main river. After curing, you can sand the river and reapply resin to fill back up to the level of the wood. For this project, we're going to use a drum sander to remove the excess material on top down to the level of the resin. If you did fill the resin river back up to the height of the wood, you can use a palm sander to remove the excess, which will create a flatter surface across more even. 
After we surface and flatten the board on both sides using the drum sander, we cut the ends off using a miter saw. You could also use a track saw or circular saw to perform the same task. We are removing about 1 8 inch of wood off the end. This will leave you with a nice square edge and remove most of the epoxy bleed. Once both ends have been trimmed, we're using a track saw to cut the sides. You could also use a regular circular saw with a level as a guide using clamps down to your board. These cuts do need to be precise if you're looking to square up the charcuterie board. Now we are ready to start the finish process using a random orbit palm sander. Using 80 grit sandpaper will remove the surfacing lines off the top and bottom of your board. Once you are completed with 80 grit, then you can move on to 120 grit. 120 grit is where we start to sand the sides and the ends of the board, which we didn't do with 80 grit. We repeat this process using 220 grit, 320 grit, and 400 grit. Once you are satisfied with the sanding process, then you can raise the grain on the wood. We are using water and paper towel to raise the grain. Once the wood dries, then the hairs of the grain are standing up and you can knock those down again with your final grit, which we use 400. This will ensure that when you apply your finish, that you don't end up with a rough surface on the wood. Using the provided food grade mineral oil and a paper towel, you can apply the finish. We recommend that you apply the finish in two to three coats but you can keep applying it until you're happy with the look and feel of your board. Mineral oil will dry out over time after each use of the charcuterie board, so keep the bottle nearby and apply a new coat after each use. This completes the finished process to your charcuterie board. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call or send us an email through the website gallery at untreatedart.com. You are now ready to go ahead and start your next board. If you do need resupplies, we offer them on our website. Thank you for purchasing our DIY kit and following along in this instruction video. We hope that you enjoy your charcuterie board for many years to come. And please be sure to share your final results with us. We'd love to see the charcuterie boards that you're making at home.